Okay, real quickly, I want to show you that the thousand years of Revelation 20 is right now, and there can be no other possibility. So let's make a really quick comparison, or let's connect some dots here real quick to show you. And one thing I like to do is use Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 as a basis for the end of the world because it's Jesus lays it out as simply as possible all right and he, he tells you everything that's gonna happen all the way up to the end of the world all right and the end of the world is when you see the Sun darkened the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken then shall appear the Sun or I'm sorry then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and all everybody's gonna mourn right and they're gonna see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven now we see this all throughout scripture it, and uh, so these it's like a sign that okay he's coming and then we see him coming and the angels gather together the elect this is the end of the world all right so we go to Revelation 6 all right so verse 13 and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth okay this is a parallel to what we read in Matthew 24 verse 29 now we'll go down a little bit I know I said I was gonna make this quick I am okay and then we read uh, let's go here verse 16 and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb the wrath of the lamb is the wrath of God it's the wrath of Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb and Jesus is God. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? This is paralleled to Matthew 24, 29 through 31. All right, it's the same event. Make no mistake about it. And so also in Revelation 20, verse 11, and I saw a great white throne. That great white throne is Jesus. And him, it, and him that sat on it, I mean, that's Jesus, right? From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. That phrase, from whom, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, that's parallel to what we read here in Revelation 6, verse 13, and the stars of heaven, and verse in uh, Matthew 24 verse 29 uh, the Sun is darkened the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken it's the same thing this is when Jesus comes this is when the wrath of God or the wrath of the Lamb same thing is upon the world and those of us that are saved are lifted up to be with Jesus and those of them that are not saved are down at our feet and this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 when uh, God says uh, it that shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel talking about Jesus because Jesus and the rest of us will be up in the air and we will crush the enemy down below. So, so also, when we read, um, "Till I make my enemies thy footstool," right? Until he makes his enemies thy footstool. So, it's all related. It's really not complicated at all. What happens is men that are not studied in the Word of God confuse this subject to no end. It's really very simple stuff. 
because it's repeated and spoken of all throughout the Bible. It's explained in different ways so that we can understand, but it's always speaking of the same thing. The wrath of God, the wrath of the Lamb, the end of the world, judgment day, the great day of the Lord. These are all the same days. The same moment in time when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven and makes everything new starting at that point. Behold, I cometh in clouds and every eye shall see.